Okay, time for another issue. I think this week what we're going to do is go around the panel and see what the panelists want to talk about, and then we'll have some debates on that. I'm being a, a good multilateralist, not a dictator anymore. <laughs> Pat, what would you like to talk about? I think uh, a phenomenon that's occurred recently, I guess within the last several months, and that's the rise not only of civil disobedience and unrest and disorder, but violence, rioting, looting, taking place in city after city around the world, Santiago, Chile, mm -hmm. Uh, it's in uh, Bolivia, it's in Beirut, it's in Baghdad, it's in Barcelona. We've seen it in Paris and Hong Kong. It's not only the causes are all, or the igniting causes are all very different, some of them inconsequential, but what kind of phenomenon and what is behind this is, I've been wondering, it's like the rise of, you know, the ethno-nationalism we talked about in yep. previous years. Okay, so we might talk about that. Eleanor, what's your issue? Uh, mine is a little closer to home. Uh, the uh, the judge that um, uh, overruled the Trump White House's claim that uh, he cannot even be investigated as a president, uh, criminally investigated, and uh, the judge basically uh, gave the green light uh, to the Southern District of New York to obtain the president's tax returns. Mm -hmm. So you have now a real... Uh, Constitutional question. Uh, they have it, they, they're appealing to the Supreme Court, and I don't know how long it'll take the Supreme Court to decide if they take the case. But this potentially is the first indication we will get about how the Supreme Court feels about the Trump lawyer's position that as a sitting president he can't be indicted and he can't even be investigated, even if he were to shoot that person on Fifth Avenue. Okay. Pat's reaching for that, so we might talk about that first. <laughs> Maddie, uh, what, what is your issue? You, you sparks your curiosity. The issue I wanted to talk about is the idea of cancel culture, which is kind of debated as a term whether or not it really exists. And there have been a few instances recently of somebody had tweets resurfaced and then lost their job. Um, recently, there was a journalist who um, was in Iowa. There was a kind of hometown hero who wrote a pro he, the journalist wrote a profile of him brought up some of his old tweets, and then he ended up losing a sponsorship that he had. Um, and it's something that we see increasingly, um, that some, something in someone's past, and they may apologize for it, but then it ends up getting them blacklisted. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, by, by the way, I like the cancel culture idea. This past week, uh, Jeff Sessions spoke at Northwestern University, and, 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 and some radicals tried to cancel him. Uh, he successfully spoke, but uh, I, I think universities are getting better now at dealing with this, so uh, I, uh, that's, that's my point of view. Uh, my, <coughs> my issue, uh, uh, we've touched on this lightly, but why don't Democrats have stronger candidates? Mm -hmm. uh, why don't the Republicans have stronger candidates like mm -hmm. uh, four years ago? They were going, going through, through this same rigmarole uh, every week. It was like anybody mm -hmm. but, uh, but McCain or anybody but Romney, those, those mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues come up. Now it's anybody but anybody. Uh, yeah. my, like. <laughs> my feeling is you put anyone under the microscope <laughs> that yeah. they have to go through to become president and all the flaws get magnified. And maybe Trump, that's, yeah. Trump escaped that because mm -hmm. nobody took him seriously. Right. Nobody thought he was going to win. He did not get the scrutiny he should have gotten uh, in 2016. But no he still, he he still has his he base now. He plenty of scrutiny, yeah. though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so that, that sort of is an interlink there between what Clarence and Madeline are saying in the sense that, you know, cancel culture. Do you think that might be one of the reasons politicians, people are sort of staying away because they think, actually, I don't want to deal with this. You know, every tweet, every Facebook, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't want to enter the public sphere because people are going to look at everything that you've done, mm -hmm. and the reason that I think it is more prevalent now is not necessarily that we've changed, but that we have the internet. And so people's mm -hmm. footprints are so much bigger. Um, but it's interesting, I think that you see more cancel culture in the culture and less in politics. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of that in politics is just partisanship, but we have um, the governor of Virginia appeared in blackface mm -hmm. um, way back when and nothing happened to him. He, you know, kind of talked it off and then people brushed mm -hmm. it under the rug, but in Black some people- very well, pragmatic in Virginia. <laughs> some, people, some people who, you know, work in entertainment, um, Sarah Silverman also appeared in blackface and she recently said that she was asked to be in a movie and when they found out about it, they said that they didn't want her anymore. So I think it's mm -hmm. much easier to get canceled um, when you're in the when the, you're in the private sector, not the you know public yeah. sector. Yeah, I think didn't sure. President Obama speak out it. recently yes. that we need to be a little more forgiving and not mm -hmm. as judgmental mm -hmm. as each other, and you know issuing a tweet isn't how you change the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to do give you, Madeline does fantastic writing on this at the Washington Examiner, a very very talented writer. But let's go on to that f issue Eleanor brought up in terms of mm -hmm. the 
prospective case here about the president's liability. How do you see that, Pat? I think, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, this case involves not so much that the folks came after Donald Trump and said, give me your tax returns, but they went after his accountant who has no executive privilege, but who controls the, uh, who controls the, uh, or has access to the Trump return. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a different, different case and it's a much easier case, it seems to me, for the people who want the returns to get them from an accounting office, in which I once worked myself, <laughs> and, uh, and they have no executive privilege there. Okay. So, so you're saying you think the Supreme Court could give the go-ahead go for these, right? Yeah, I think if they went after the President of the United States uh, and said, give us your returns, he'd just say no and the court would stand with him. Well, that may be a wrinkle in how it's being decided, but I do think his tax returns are the Rosetta Stone here. <laughs> I mean, he has so fiercely guarded them from the beginning. But, you know, it seems to me that... What's in look, there? Look, who's, who's got them? The IRS. Right. If the IRS has got all my tax returns, they could go in the files and say, did this guy cheat? Yeah. They would have gone through them again him. and again and again. Where is the deep I think it's state embarrassment. when we need? Where is the deep state yeah. when we need them? <laughs> They're probably <laughs> leaking the returns. Right. Well, and maybe, but, but <laughs> uh, no, nothing has leaked, and perhaps the issue here is President Trump's sensitivity about the actual nature of his wealth. I think right? that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so so let's let's go on to yeah. Clarence to, to Pat's point about the rise mm -hmm. of protest movements around the world. Yeah. Do you do you see that as a rise or do you you know what do you? You know, it's a very good question. I, I thought about this in a while, but this kind of reminds me of the Arab Spring. It's kind of the flip mm -hmm. side because because mm -hmm. remember, remember how we were a lot more enthusiastic uh, than we should have been as it turned out about the uh, the, the Arab Spring because mm -hmm. so much of that was mm -hmm. put down or or or, or 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 went in bad directions. Uh, but but now we are seeing a lot of uprisings yeah. uh, around the planet. And uh, is there a pattern or is it just uh, uh, well, with Twitter, et cetera, uh, the, the changes in communication you know, that look, are going on. Look, let's mm -hmm. take Paris. Yep. Fuel tax to cut carbon you know, dioxide emissions mm -hmm. was what ignited weekends of rioting by the yellow vests, almost in, imperiling the government. Mm -hmm. in, in Chile, in Santiago, they raised the price, I think, by 4 or 10 percent on the subway. Mm -hmm. And they tore it down. There are riots in cities and things. But what it's mean? Everybody knows, I mean, Americans are very tolerant of protests and stuff, but all, so many of these turn into real violence, rioting, fighting with the cops constantly. And mm -hmm. Well, when, go when governments don't work, eventually people get frustrated and they- these are, they, Many of these are they, democratic at, governments. At, well, mm -hmm. But they're not able to deliver or they are corrupt or whatever. I mean, you've mentioned too many countries to, to deal with. Uh, mm -hmm. Focusing specifically on Iraq, which is a country we, spent a lot of money mm -hmm. in and on, and uh, the people that mm -hmm. write in lives, and uh, the people there are protesting, and the government isn't delivering, and I heard one commentator say, the government, there are so many demands, and they're so diffuse that the government can't, can't figure out how to respond. Yeah, and one of the, pro excuse me, one of the protesters said, I'm gonna be out here in the streets until I can walk the streets of Baghdad safely as a woman. Mm -hmm. And the, the commentator said, you know, that's something that the government really can't deliver on, at least you know, quickly. Baghdad, Baghdad, and point south, the riots are Iranians go home. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're fed up with the control the Iranians have achieved under Shia governments, basically, which are Shia like the Iranians are. So that's a different item there, but you know, it, but you know, in the other places, Barcelona, it's we want to be independent and free of Spain, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. what do they want? Liberty, independence, yeah. what we wanted. It is quite mm -hmm. fascinating with the Iraqi protests that you do see, and the same in, in Lebanon, actually, mm -hmm. re absolute rejection. Mm -hmm. Shia youth, but Tadar al Sada the former you know, puppet for right. Iran is now the Shia nationalist. Actually, in some sense, what we're seeing, I think, is mm -hmm. the proof of American democratic opportunity for all that loss, maybe not worth it. Now, Iranian imperialism, I mean, you have Shia youth in Karbala, you know, the Battle of Karbala, mm -hmm. Imam Ali, like one of the holiest places in Islam, burning the Iranian consulate. Mm -hmm. Homanianism, I think, has a problem. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent here. Well. Uh, Madeline, <laughs> Madeline, with protests and you know the, the culture wars and all that, how much impact do you think significant media personalities, politicians, play a role in fostering this on Twitter? Mm -hmm. And does yeah. that need, uh, is, is that a case for more reform of hate speech, for example? So there are a couple of things I was thinking of. One is the way that people in the US have been supporting protesters in Hong Kong. 
And we've seen how that has gone with censor censorship and U.S. companies getting upset and saying, you know, this is not good. We have we have interests in, you know, in China. Um, and then um, in the U.S., as far as protests that are going on here, I think one of the big civil disobedience um, issues is people are kind of drumming up the idea of climate change is something that right. people should walk out of schools. Yep. Um, Jane Fonda is getting arrested every Friday at the Capitol. Yep. Um, and I think that you're seeing a lot of celebrities in the U.S. kind of push that as something that, you know, at home here, this is something that's important to protest. People believe their cause is more important, climate change, take that, is more important than the rules of a democratic society, that if the democratic society says, you know, that does nothing about climate change, then they've got to go into the streets and they've got a right to do it. And that's, that's, a, that's I think that's a legitimate response. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> although, although pres Especially pres on climate change. Yeah, pre mm -hmm. President Trump doesn't have much respect for the rules of a democratic society either yeah. these days. He even openly talked about the, what, that, that uh, bogus uh, emoluments clause. Uh, uh, phony, uh, uh, phony, phony. phony. Yeah, yeah, that phony mm -hmm. emoluments clause. This is a man who has sworn to uphold the Constitution. Well, why don't you teach him for the emoluments clause? Why have your people not <laughs> well, done this? <laughs> that, 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 could, that, that could be one of the articles of, of, of impeachment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Well, I, th I think one of the observational things here, uh, you know, is that we can talk about these various issues that we all mm -hmm. care about. Each of, each of us has picked mm -hmm. an issue here. And we can do so in a way uh, with passion and candid, which we just saw there and pre about President Trump, <laughs> but with affection, <laughs> disagreement with affection, which is uh, my panelists are I laughing at me as I say that. for Trump around here. I love, I love to criticize <laughs> okay. Trump. That's an affection. <laughs> okay, but that's going to be it for this week. All right. Thank you, Tom. <laughs>